Today we're going to be showing you how to make a gorgeous emulsified hair conditioner that's going to leave your hair feeling soft, smooth and nourished. So if that's your thing then stick around. everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name's Anne and along with my good friend Wayne, we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company, which is a small bath and body business based in East Sussex in the UK. And we also run this YouTube channel. And today we're going to be bringing you something a little bit different. We're going to be showing you how to make an emulsified hair conditioning lotion. Emulsified lotions are something we haven't really shown on this channel much before, but we are going to be bringing more emulsified lotions and creams and things like that to our channel over the coming months. Because although we started with soap, we have kind of ventured out and branched out behind the scenes and experimented with different products. And we're now at a stage where we are ready and confident enough to actually bring them forwards and show them to you guys as well. So, we are starting with a hair conditioner, and this is a really lovely conditioner that's gonna leave your hair feeling silky and smooth and nourished and loved. And there are a variety of ingredients we are using today. Our key ingredient is a BTMS 25, which is what we're gonna be using in our conditioner today as our star ingredient. And this is going to act as an emulsifier. It's going to add a conditioning element to your conditioner. And it is also, importantly, a cationic ingredient. And what that means is that BTMS has a positive charge and your hair has a negative charge. And as we know, positive and negative attract each other. So what that means is that the BTMS is gonna get attracted to your hair. It is going to blend really nicely with your hair and it's gonna give it a very fine coating which isn't going to feel sticky or nasty, it's just going to give your hair a nice light coating which is going to help against frizz, it's going to make your hair feel silky, it's going to make it feel really lovely and smooth. So BTMS is our star ingredient today. As well as the BTMS we have got some other ingredients, I'm going to chat briefly about them. Um, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because I'm still trying to keep our videos a little bit on the shorter side than usual. What I am going to do is pop up a blog post to accompany this recipe on our Patreon and I'm also going to pop up the recipe and the steps on Patreon as well. Uh, and in that I'm just going to go into more detail on the ingredients and I'm also going to give some suggestions for substitutions as well if you don't want to use any of these particular ingredients that I'm showing you today. So in addition to the BTMS 25 we will be using distilled water and it is important for this recipe to be using distilled water and not tap water because you just want that kind of purity of the distilled water. We will also be using some D-panthenol. We shall also be using some honey moisturiser, which I think is also known as honey quat. This is a really lovely ingredient. It will add similar qualities to glycerin, but it is much more kind of potent than glycerin. And this is also a cationic ingredient. So again, it's going to get attracted to your hair and your hair is going to absorb it and it's going to add a really nice feel to your hair. We have got some preservative, preservative 12. Um, because it's got water in it, this needs to be preserved. You could not not preserve this recipe because it would just go bad and it would go nasty and you'd be introducing so many bacteria into it that it's really not worth not using a preservative. We're going to be using some silk amino acids. We're going to be using some monoi oil. I love my monoi oil. Um, it smells gorgeous, although the smell probably won't come through today because we've got essential oils, but it is a really good ingredient in hair care. It is coconut oil based and coconut oil is going to penetrate the shaft of the hair and just leave it feeling lovely. So monoi oil and then for scent we have got rosemary and lavender essential oils. Rosemary is really good for use in hair care and lavender is just a nice kind of gentle essential oil that blends really well with rosemary. So that is what we are going to be using to scent our conditioner today. Right, all that out the way, let's get on to making this conditioner. 
So it goes without saying that all of the equipment we're using today, so the jugs, the spatulas, the spoons, etc., have all been really well cleaned and sterilized before we started. And it's really important when you are making bath and body products to make sure that you are working in a lovely, clean environment and that all of your equipment is properly sterilized. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the distilled water and I'm going to weigh out 232 grams into this jug. And this is going to form the water phase of our emulsion. So after I've weighed out our water, we are going to pop it to one side and we are going to move on to our oil phase. And for this, I'm using a smaller glass beaker. Um, it's a really useful little one. I actually got it out of a science set that I bought for my son that he never used. So I've stolen it back because it's going to work really well for this. First, we are going to weigh out 24 grams of our monoi oil. I'm just going to carefully weigh it into here. Monoi oil is normally solid at room temperature. I have stood this in a cup of hot water to melt it down because otherwise I wouldn't have got it out of this tiny little spout. But yeah, when it arrives, if you order it, it will likely be solid. And to this, we are going to add 18 grams of our BTMS 25. And that is all we need in our oil phase today. So I'm going to pop that to one side as well. And the last thing we're going to prepare now is our cool down phase. So this is the ingredients that we're actually going to add after we have heated our oil and water, combine them, blitz them together a little bit, we are going to add in some further ingredients that need to be added in the cool down stage because they can be affected by the heat. So they need to be added once these two have been combined and cooled down. And for the cool down phase, we need three grams of our DL panthenol. We need 11 grams of our honey moisturizer. six grams of our silk amino acids going in next. Next is our scent and I'm using lavender and rosemary as I said. I'm using one gram of rosemary and two grams of lavender because I find rosemary to be quite a strong scent. And the last ingredient is the preservative 12, and we are adding in three grams of this. And I'm just gonna mix these together a little, just to incorporate them. And then I'm gonna set them to one side, and we're gonna come back to them when we have finished doing our magic with these. So we now have our water phase and our oil phase all ready and what we need to do now is heat these. So I'm going to do it in a water bath style. So I'm going to have a saucepan of boiling water and I'm going to pop these inside and then I'm just going to heat them gently so that the BTMS melts. So I'm going to heat probably to about 70, 75 degrees C and then we're going to be ready to combine them and make some magic happen. So I can't get the best angle on these, but these are the two water baths I've set up for our water phase here and our oil phase just here. And we're just going to allow them to warm up and we want that BTMS to melt. So I'm going to give it a stir with this little stick from time to time. BTS, BTMS can be a bit of a pain to get it to melt. So this could take a while, but when they've melted and they are at temperature, we will be able to move on to our next step. So once I've heated them both to temperature, I'm going to add the oil phase into the water phase, just being careful of my fingers. <laughs> so we just pour it down into the water. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our stick blender to blend the emulsion together for about 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, 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 uh. 
And after giving it that whiz with the stick blender for 30 to 45 seconds, I'm going to remove it from our little water bar. And I'm going to stir it by hand now while it cools. And I'm now just going to continue to stir this while it cools. And it needs to be below 40 degrees centigrade before we add in our cool down ingredients. So it's just going to be some stirring till it's cooled down enough for us to add in those other ingredients. It's quite thin at the moment, but as it cools, it will thicken. So now it's cooled to below 40 degrees, we can add in our cool down ingredients. And it is already getting a lot thicker, as you can probably see here from this consistency now. I'm going to spatula them in and then I'm probably going to give them another little whiz with the stick blender just because I personally like making sure that they are really well incorporated. And the final step before actually bottling would be to pH test this just to make sure it is at a suitable pH for hair. I'm not going to show you me pH testing today because it sometimes takes us a bit of time and it's a lot of back and forth and if it needs adjusting it just takes time. So I'm going to do an entirely separate video on how to pH test products. So this is our hair conditioner which we can pH test and then bottle up. So once you've pH tested and are happy with the pH of your product, you can bottle it up. And this is the fun bit, where because it is now quite thick, it's always fun getting it into a bottle with a tiny little nozzle. And I'm going to try and get it in through the funnel, but I think, oh, it may even be too thick for that. <laughs> take some time. <laughs> so a little while later and we end up with our finished bottled product and obviously I'm going to need to show you how it performs. Um, I will show you just the consistency, it's probably still going to thicken up even more overnight but at the minute that is the consistency we are looking at for our hair conditioner so a lovely rich creamy consistency. Look at me, I fill the bottle up, takes me ages, and the first thing I do is tip it right back out the bottle to show you. But there we go, that is our hair conditioner. I'm actually going to wash my hair, condition it, and I'm going to show you, show off my hairy head so you can all see how my hair looks actually after using this conditioner. And hopefully it'll look halfway decent. Let's skip to that. So one shower later, I have tested out our hair conditioner and this is how it left my hair looking. So I do tend to have quite fine kind of fly away hair that is prone to getting a little bit frizzy and I haven't had my hair cut since August 2021 so the ends are often a little bit dry and not in the best condition but I am really happy with how this hair conditioner worked on my hair. My hair feels soft, it feels smooth, it feels conditioned, the ends for once don't feel too dry and I can run my fingers through it like a mermaid would um, <laughs> because that's what mermaids do, isn't it? So overall, I'm really happy with how this hair conditioner has actually turned out. Um, and I thoroughly recommend giving it a go. We are going to put a printable PDF recipe on our Patreon page. And we are also going to have a more in-depth guide on the different ingredients and potential substitutions that you can use as well. Um, I will link to our Patreon page in the description so you can head over there if you wish to. If you don't wish to do that, that's cool. I'm going to put the recipe down in the description for what we use today. Um, and yeah, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. We've certainly enjoyed making this video and I'm going to be using this conditioner on my hair in place of my regular one now because I'm really happy with how it turned out. So enjoy the rest of your week, we'll see you next time and until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.